thank you so much for joining me again. We're continuing our series. Um, I have 133 pages of Bible verses that I put down that have helped me uh, throughout the last 12 years. Plus, um, since I started writing them down, and I just wanted to share them with everybody. So we have uh, I don't know, a dozen or 13 or whatever uh, video audio videos that are really videos, but we put our audio on videos on YouTube. We want to share God's word throughout the world. Amen. So please go to our website, eternalevangelism.com. That's eternalevangelism.com. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of teachings up there. And um, today, our uh, there's a search function there. So you can use that and search for any subject you want. and You'll get a great biblical answer. Praise God. We are combating the false church out there. Read the book of Jude and read Second Peter chapter 2. There are false churches everywhere. I believe 99 plus 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 percent of all the churches that call themselves Christian out there are false. They don't preach the whole gospel. They preach an ear-tickling Revelation 3.16 lukewarm gospel that sends people directly to hell. This study is called Do Not Love the World and Walk as Jesus walked. Here we go. First John chapter 2 verses 15 to 17. It says, Do not love the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away and all the lust thereof. But listen closely. But he that does the will of God abides forever. You will hear in every single one of my exhortations, you must do, you must do, you must work, you must work, you must work righteousness. You must do for God. If you're not a doer, you're deceived. If your quote pastor is saying, Jesus did it all on the cross, there's nothing you have to do. He's a liar. First John 2, 17. And the world passes away and all the lust thereof. But he that does the will of God abides forever. The question is, are you listening to your false quote pastor in the false pulpit of that hellbound church that you're sitting in? Or are you going to want to listen to the word of God? Listen closely. I pray you do. Stay with us. This is going to be a short one. Philippians chapter 3, verses 18 through 20. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is their shame, who mind earthly things. For our conversation, the true believers, is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. You must keep looking. You must keep doing. If you're getting entertained by sports and you get that TV on for hours a day and you're doing Facebook hours a day and you're doing all this stuff and you're living the American dream and the big house and the nice cars and all this while 22,000 children under the age of five years old is dying every day because they're starving, then you're going straight to hell. Amen? Proverbs 14 2 says there seems a way that is right unto man but the end thereof are the ways of death I don't want to see you go to hell I really don't listen John 16 24 here until you have asked nothing in my name ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full you must ask the right things not your will be done but his will be done amen John chapter 17 verse 13 and now come I thee these things I speak in the world that they might have joy filled in themselves. Joy comes from the Lord. Joy comes from the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joy comes from within, not from without. I used to get joy by making tens of thousands of dollars a month. I used to get joy by living in a 4,000 square foot house, having a hot tub, having six cars, a, a, a Cadillac, Jaguar, Jeep, Hummer, customized boats, jet skis, backhoe loader, you know, <clears throat> the house down on Cape Cod, Massachusetts, one up in North Mass. I used to get joy or traveling to, to all over the world. No, I don't want to do any of that anymore. Unless I'm working for the Lord. Amen? 
The joy comes from the Holy Spirit. It comes from within. If you're looking for joy without, and if you're be, trying to be a people pleaser, which many Christians are going to go to hell, you're going to be a Jesus pleaser. And then you'll be hated by the world. We're going to get into that really quickly as we conclude the study in a few minutes. Jude 124. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Yes, God is able to keep you from falling, but it's not what most people think. It's not what most of these false pastors teach. They say you say a sinner's prayer, which is not in the Bible, by the way, and Jesus will keep you from falling. But listen to what you have to do as we go on in the study. We already talked about uh, how you must do the will of God in 1 John 2, 15 to 17. So Jude 124, and read the whole book of Jude. It talks about false teachers. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you falsos before the present of his glory with exceeding joy. So yes, <clears throat> if you are doing his will, if you are abiding in the vine who is Jesus, Praise God. If you are going to the sin offering, Jesus became a sin offering, not a sin covering. Romans 3.25 says he became the propitiation for sins that are past. Praise God. Then he will help you. Philippians 2.2 2 says, Fulfill ye my joy, that you may be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and one mind. Be sure that if you're in a denomination, you don't have one accord or one mind with any other denomination. And if you're in one of those non-denominational churches that act like uh, circuses, get out. Listen to 1 Peter 1, 8. Whom having not seen, you love. In whom, though now you don't see him, you believe. And you rejoice with unspeakable joy, full of glory. So with all these truths, we know that in the days of Noah, eight people only got saved. Millions and millions went to hell after the Lord God flooded the earth. Amen? Millions! They wouldn't listen to the preacher of righteousness. They wouldn't listen to Noah, who was crying to them every day, please listen to me. Oh, that guy's a heretic, that crazy guy with a big beard, and you know, whatever. And they're just doing their American dream back then. I'm making an example. Now listen. Everybody's looking for revival on this and that. Wait a minute. The Bible says there must be a falling away first before Jesus returns for his bride. You hear all these heretics. Thousands of people, hundreds of people in their churches, not hundreds of people in a in a city that are saved. And there's got thousands of people in one church. Listen, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. And this is what I say to you. And I said this to myself 12 years ago. I was in six years of false Christianity going to hell. Thought I was covered in my sin. The Bible says, go and sin no more. Amen? The Bible says in Matthew 5, 48, be ye perfect as my Father in heaven is perfect. That's what Jesus uses for an example for us. The Father himself. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there be a falling away first, and that man of sin shall be revealed, the son of perdition. This is not talking about painters painting a house, falling away from the house on a ladder. This is talking about people that had become born again and have fell away and have given up the Holy Spirit and have fallen away from the faith. How can anybody deny the falling away as if it isn't mentioned in the Bible? It sounds good that you're saved forever, but that's heresy. It's spelled out in black and white, and it's in full swing now. And those who deny it have already become part of it. Listen very closely to these words. Your pastor will not Put that in quotes, by the way. Your false pastor, I should say, will not read these verses. Matthew 24, 10 and 11. And then many shall be offended. And offended in the Greek means to fall away. Many shall fall away. Okay? And shall betray one another. And shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. We are in that day. 99% plus, plus, plus of the, quote, churches on Main Street and the back roads and the cities and the towns all over this world preaching a false, easy believism gospel. 
So you give them money. They don't care about your soul. I don't care how nice they dress and how much they smile. They're heretics. Matthew 24, 24. Listen, for there shall be false Christs and false prophets. They shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall even deceive the very elect. That's God's word. Matthew eleven sixteen, And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me, who shall not fall away from Jesus. Hebrews 6, 4 through 6, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucified themselves, the Son of God, afresh and put him to an open shame. I want to clarify this. This is for people like Esau. Are you an Esau? This is for people like Judas. They were once in the faith. They left the faith. They tried to come back, but they didn't truly repent. So they put the Son of God into an open shame, and they had no place for repentance. Okay? You can't center repent, center repent, center repent, center repent. It's not how it works. Oh, Jim, we sin daily and thought one indeed. Really? What can't you give up? Lying, cheating, stealing, adultery, lust of the eyes. You can't stop that? Have you done that while you were listening to this video? You might, you, see, you've stopped it for 10 minutes. You can't do it for 10 hours, 10 days, 10 months, etc. Amen, see? I hope you haven't sinned while you've been listening to this. Praise God. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 through 2. So now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. There it is. Depart from the had faith. They were saved. Don't believe these Baptists and these Calvinists and Reformed Baptists and a lot of the non-denominationals. Oh, you're saved forever. What a liar. It says in the latter times, people will depart from the faith. Giving heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with an iron. And that's what's spoken in the vast majority of these false churches today all over the place. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, 1 through 3. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter from us <clears throat> as the day of Christ is at hand let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there shall come a falling away first and that man of sin shall be revealed the son of perdition so I put that down twice and I expanded it to the, when you read you should read the whole chapter basically amen there you go Isaiah 52, 2-3. Listen to what Jesus was like. For he, Jesus, shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of the dry ground. He had no form or comeliness. That means he had no magnificence nor splendor. He made himself, didn't he? He's God himself, right? He had no... Listen, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised. He's rejected of men. He's a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as we hid our eyes and our faces from him, he was despised. And we did not esteem him. When he came, most of the Jews that were supposed to be in the word were too busy living their best life now and trying to get into high positions and trying to hold on to their and, and not trying holding on to their sin that when jesus showed up if you were a true studier of the word a true uh, a, a godly person you would have looked at him you would have talked for a second you said boom that is god that's the messiah when jesus went around boom he said to matthew come with me 
Matthew didn't say, I gotta go tell this person, that person, I can't, I can't, I, you know, I'm a tax collector, boom, no. And apostle after apostle after apostle, disciple after, when he's healed the man that was on the mount that had 2,000 demons that couldn't be held by huge chains that the whole village knew about, when he healed him and put the 2,000 legion, he said, her name is Legion, you remember? I hope you know that story from the Bible. And he put the 2,000, they asked, put us into the swine. 2,000 swine got filled with demons and they threw themselves in the water. Amen. And that man, and, and now, because that person became a true believer, he wanted to physically follow Jesus. Jesus says, no. Go back to your village and tell them what happened. Are you working out your faith with fear and trembling? Do you have a picture on the wall, which is heresy, with Jesus with long hair, when in his word it says long hair is an abomination to God? It's a shame unto men and God? I'm going to touch on a few more things. The world is pushing a doctrine of devils that is disgusting. Listen to Romans 1, 22 to 32. If you condone these heathen, if you send your children to public or private schools and you're not homeschooling them, be sure that you're going straight to hell. There is a one in a million exception that if you're not a person with a little bit of means and you have to work three jobs and you have to put your child in school because there's no real churches near you, they're all heresies, you're, 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 you're doing your best, you're a single mother teaching your kids after you get home from work and you're working multiple, okay, but 99 plus 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 percent of you get the woman home, men man up, downsize that home, downsize the cars, get rid of the three or four thousand dollars a month you have in, in, in loans or whatever it is, live humble for God, and rebuke filth like this that's taught in every public and private school in this country called America. The worst country in the world. Actually, Israel and America are kind of jostling for the worst country in the world. Murderous, hateful people. Romans 1, chapter 2. And, and they promote this. What Jesus says is disgusting. Leviticus, chapter 20, verse 13 says, If man lie with man as he does with woman, they are both an abomination and they shall be put to death. Do you think that that law of God, because Jesus changes not, has been done away with? Romans chapter 1, verses 22 to 32, it says, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. This is the word of God. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God. Remember, man was made in the image of God. So they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and to birds and to four-footed beasts and creepy things. Verse 24, Romans 1 says, Wherefore God has now given them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts. God did not force them to become these disgusting people. God, after they made the decision, gave them up to the uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. If you don't work righteousness, God is going to lift his hand off you. His sin offering will always be there. But he's not going to have his hand on you and help you go through life if you're not obeying him. And in verse 25 of Romans 1 said, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, verse 26, they, God gave them up to vile affections for even their woman changed the natural use into that which is against nature. Woman having attraction to other women. That's vile. It's disgusting. It sends people directly to hell. Verse 27 of Romans 1. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of a woman, 
burned in their lust towards one another. Do you know the average homosexual has sex with, I think, over 800 individuals in their lifetime? That's natural. That's a fact. It's against nature. Verse 27, and likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust towards one another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving themselves a recompense for their error, which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God, after they made the decision, now the Bible says God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do the things which are not convenient. Verse 29, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing, listen closely, verse 32 of Romans 1, you might not be one of the things that God has just mentioned there, but if you condone them, if you send your kids to public school, if you're high-fiving these people, if you are not telling them they're going straight to hell, listen, who knowing the judgment of God, so you know it's not good, they that which commit such things are worthy of death, we know that, but not only do the same, but those that have pleasure in them, that do them. Those people are just as guilty. Adam and Eve. You must walk as Jesus walked, 1 John 2, 6. He that says he believes in Jesus must walk as he walked. Here's the warning, and we'll finish off in a little bit. Warning, Luke 21, 34 to 36. And take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts are weighted down. That means depressed anxious you're always biting your nails like Brrr. take heed watch listen learn if you have the holy spirit you're not depressed you're not anxious over nothing okay amen and what i mean by that is clinically depressed okay you run over your dog or something like that you're gonna be a little sad for a minute or two okay let your hearts be weighted down with headaches and drinking and anxieties of this life and that day judgment day should suddenly come upon you Luke 21 35 says for it shall come as a snare on all those sitting on the face of the whole earth verse 36 says watch pray in every season that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things which shall occur and stand before the Son of Man. Again, command after command, things that a true Christian has to do. Galatians 5.22 says, But the Spirit, fruit of the Spirit, excuse me, is joy, love, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. You'll hear that in the false churches. You'll hear John 3.16 in the false churches. But you won't hear Revelation 3.15 and 16. This is if you're lukewarm, you're going to get puked out on Judgment Day. You won't hear John 3.36 as the wrath of God abides on sinners. No, Jesus does not love sinners. Jesus' love is available to sinners. Jesus is not a friend of sinners. John 15.14 says, you all my, Jesus speaking, you are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. So 1 Thessalonians 1, 6 says, Become followers of us. These are true disciples. And of the Lord Jesus, having received the word in much affliction, but with joy of the Holy Ghost. Remember Paul and Silas, thrown in the middle of the jail. Their the clothes were rent off. They were beat so bad. They had stripes on them. They're bleeding. And at midnight, they prayed and they worshipped. Praise God. I didn't get depressed. I didn't get out. I was going to get out of here. They prayed. They had trust in the Lord. It's going to get worse, by the way, as the days go on. It's getting worse every day. Acts chapter 9, verse 31. Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria. They were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. 
were multiplied. So if you are depressed, if you are anxious, you're devoured by the devil. That's where he wants you to be because that takes you away from God. It takes you away from life. 1 Peter chapter 5, 6 to 11 says, Humble yourselves before the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your cares upon him. Why? The Bible says because he cares for you. If you're living holy for him, of course. And then it says, verse 8 of 1 Peter 5, be sober, be vigilant. These are commands. Because your adversary, the devil, is like a roaring lion. He's right on your shoulder. Blah, 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 blah. Resist him. He will flee. But you got to keep resisting. Your adversary, the, oh, yeah, don't, you know, don't call your family out of sin. Just kind of mention it to them a little bit. That won't do anything to them. That won't prick their heart. That won't make them sad and miss you. Whatever the thing is. Listen to that false pastor. Well, I never want to say false. Listen to that wonderful pastor. Oh, he's such a nice man, Pastor Jimmy. Oh, he says such a good word every week as he's talking about sports and, you know, going to the beach and uses one or two Bible verses. They're foundational verses. The devil is roaring as a lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who has called us unto eternal glory by Jesus Christ, after that you have suffered for a while, makes you perfect, establishes you, strengthens you, settles you. Amen. To him be all the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Five more verses. Second Timothy. 1, 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, anxiety, depression, hate, unrighteous hate, uh -huh. unrighteous anger, but of power. That was my addition there, by the way. Back to the Bible, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You must be sober. 2 Corinthians, in every sense of the word. 2 Corinthians 8, 19. And not only that, but who was also chosen of the churches to travel with us with this grace, which is administered by us to the glory of the same Lord and the declaration of your ready mind. So are you a double-minded man? Do you go to church on Sunday and live like the devil except for the half an hour you're at church? Wave your hands. Jesus is no one love. Jesus, who you, you? Jesus did it all for me. I'm a wretched sinner. My God, have mercy. James 1 8 says, A double minded man is unstable in all his ways. James 4 4, listen closely. You adulterers and adulteresses. That's what Jesus says. You adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know that friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore be a friend of the bees, <laughs> whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world, is an enemy of God. You can't be friend of the world. You can't be hanging out with sinners. Go on our website. I'll tell you in one minute. Luke sixteen fifteen. We'll conclude with, and he said unto them. You which justify yourselves before men. God knows your heart. For that which is highly esteemed by men is an abomination in the sight of God. Tim Tebow, Duck Dynasty, all your TV preachers, Benny Hinn, and all these other heretics. They're all going to hell. Thank you for listening. I love you. To Jesus be all the glory. See you next time. Amen.